Masichet Baba Mesiyah Daf Samiche. We're talking about returning interest. If a borrower pays the lender interest, which he's not allowed to do, and the lender can't take it either. But if he does pay, then the Betin gets involved and they require the lender to give it back. All right, that would be a simple case if he just uh, you know, gave him $10 of interest, he has to return the $10. But now we're going to see three somewhat complicated cases. Amar Abaye, Hayman de Masik Suza de Rebita Bechabre, Vekaz Lichite Arbaa Gerive Bezuza Beshuka, Vehib Le Ihu Chamisha. You have a person who is owed one dinar of ribit, right? The lender is owed from the borrower one dinar of ribit. And again, he's not allowed to pay and the lender is not allowed to collect. But let's say he does collect. Now, at the time, uh, one, uh, uh, one se'a, four se'a of wheat, gerive is the same as a se'a, four se'a of wheat are going for one zoos in the, in the market. That's the market price. So, um, since he owes one dinar, he can give him four se'a. But the borrower, he's in a generous mood, and he decides to give five se'a instead. Right? He's giving five, he's giving a discount, uh, he's giving a good price, some extra wheat, for the same zoos that he owes. But now the betin comes and has to remove that payment and give it back to the borrower. How much do they extract? So we will take away only uh, four se'a uh, from uh, from the lender because the fifth one was an extra gift. Um, he just gave it to him at a special discount price. But that was not the market price, and so therefore, since the payment of the of the ribit was only one zuz, and one zuz equals uh, four se'a, so there was a twenty five percent added uh, payment. Uh, but but that is not that's not that part was not ribit. So we let him keep one se'a, and we take away four se'a according to Abaye. Makes sense. Rava, however, is more stringent. And he says the Betin takes away all five se'a from the lender and gives it back to the borrower. Why? Because when he gave it, he gave all five se'a as a payment of ribit. Right? And he said, listen, I, I know I owe you one zuz. I'm giving you a discounted price. I know the market price. I'm giving you a better price and uh, throwing in an extra se'a. But that's all part of the payment. And so even though it's extra, since it was given and received as ribit payment, he has to return the entire amount. Similar case, uh, someone is owed, and this time it's four dinar of interest from another, and the borrower, instead of giving him cash, he gives him a cloak. A cloak that might be worth more than the four dinar. Now we is going to come to, to the betin is going to come and collect it back. According to Abaye, the lender has to give back four dinar. He can give back cash and the cloak he can keep for himself because we look at the amount of ribit that was that he had to pay, and so we only he only has to return that. The cloak itself, whether it's worth four dinar or more. He can keep. Rava Amar Gilima Mapikinan Mine Maita Ama Kiehi de la Lemiru Gilima de Mechase Vekae Gilima de Rebita Hu Rava, however, is once again stringent and says the Betin removes the cloak from the lender. What's the reason? So that people will not look at look at him wearing the cloak and say, Oh, look at this uh, cloak that he is going around and wearing. That is a cloak of interest. People will know that this was given. By the, from the borrower to the lender, and they won't necessarily know that the Betin already extracted uh, an amount of four zuzim. So this will publicize this uh, sinful act that they did, and therefore give back the entire thing. And so Abayirava uh, is stringent here as well, although for an additional reason. Amarava, third case. This time, the borrower owes the lender uh, 12 dinar of interest. And the borrower had a courtyard and he rents out the courtyard to the lender. Now, normally, the market price for that courtyard was 10, uh, 10 dinar, 
but they agreed on a price of 12. He overpaid. And the lender, he didn't mind overpaying because after all, he wasn't paying out of pocket. He was just using the interest that he was owed. Uh, so he didn't mind. It's kind of like when you overpay when you're using Amex points. Uh, you don't mind so much. It's not like real money. It's, there, you know, it's just, just points. So he says, okay, listen, you owe me 12. Even though this courtyard is really only worth 10, I'll take the courtyard for 12 and that'll be the interest payment. Now, of course, again, it's not allowed to be paid. He's not allowed to collect. And the Betin is going to come and collect. How much do they collect? Here we only have Rava's opinion. We make the lender pay 12, which is really interesting because he only got a value of 10. That's the market value of the rent that he got. And so uh, now we're going to ask about that. Amale Ravacha Medifti Ravina. Ravacha from Difti S. Ravina about Rava's ruling. Velemale, can't the lender say, Ki agra hachi dehava ka mishtar shili. Hashta de la mishtar shili. Ke de ageri kule ama hu de agarna. The lender can make a claim and say, when I rented it originally at the higher price of 12, I did that because I was just profiting. It was all profit for, for me. I, I had nothing before, but you owed me uh, 12. And so I wasn't paying out of pocket. I was saying, okay, fine. I'll count your, the, even though it's value 10, um, I'll agree to pay 12. However, now that you're coming and collecting the money back from me, and so now it's not just profit to me. I have to pay this out of pocket. I don't agree to 12. I want the market value of 10. And I only received 10 of value, and therefore I should only have to pay 10. How could you take 12 from me? And that was their question. Why did I rule that way? And the answer is, No, it's because we can tell the lender, you considered it and you accepted it. You accepted to um, pay a higher price of 12. It doesn't matter what the reason was. Now, since you accepted this as 12 and, uh, you, and, you, and you used the courtyard, so you got that benefit, that is worth 12, you, you decided it was worth 12 to you. So now that we are removing this interest because you weren't allowed to receive it, you have to actually pay 12. And so that is the law. Next Mishnah. Marbin ala sachar ven marbin al hamecher. One can increase the price of rent and for the benefit of paying later. But one may not increase the sale price for the benefit of the buyer paying later. First, we're going to see some examples, and then we're going to see the reasons for this in the Gemara, why there's a difference. Kesad. So someone is renting out his courtyard, and he says, listen, um, I'm going to rent it to you. If you pay everything up front, then the price is 10 sela for the entire year. Vim shel chodesh bechodesh, sela la chodesh mutad. But the renter says, if you want to pay month by month, you don't want to pay all up front, then it, the price is one sela every month, which after a year is going to be 12 sela. That is permitted. This is similar to a lot of times when you um, have a subscription to an app or a website. They give you that choice. You could pay uh, $10 per month or $100 for the whole year. They often use even the same ratio. So this is permitted when it's a rental. However, if the same thing regarding a sale is not permitted. Someone's selling his field. He's doing it early in the season. He says, listen, if you pay me all now, then you can have it at for 1,000 uh, zoos. Uh, but if you wait to pay t later at the time of the harvest, uh, then you'll have to pay 1,200 zoos. I'm, pay I'm, I'm selling to you t now either way, right? It's yours. You could pay now 1,000 or you could pay in six months 1,200. Well, that is interest. That is prohibited because he is paying more for the benefit of paying later. Now, you can understand why he might do that if you do it at the time of the harvest. Then he's collecting, he has the harvest, and now he'll have more cash on hand. But nevertheless, he's paying more for the benefit of paying later, so that's prohibited. So now let's see what's the difference. Why in the Resha is it, is it permitted? How come in the case of a rental is permitted to do so? And in the Sefa, in the case of a sale, it's not permitted. 
both of these Amoraim gave the same, gave this explanation. Sechirut ena mishtalemet ela basof. Vai kevant ela meta zimne ligmigba lavatar netar le. Mishvahu de hachi shavya. Vai de kamar le imer shavata noten li harehu lecha beresis elem nashana ozulehu de ka mozil gabe. The fundamental difference is that a payment of rent only needs to be done at the end of the period. That's when one is liable. Ela le basof. And so this in this case, since the time for payment has not yet has not yet been reached when they're at the beginning of the year and they're making they're deciding to make the deal. And so this is not a time to pay, and therefore he is not paying any extra for the benefit of waiting. That's Agad Natad. Agad is payment, Natad is waiting. So he's not paying extra because he can pay later. The later payment at the end of the period or at the end of every month. That is the standard time when you'd have to pay. Um, and so that's the actual value. The value is one sela per month. So that's the standard value. You're not paying anything extra. Now, when the, re- the, uh, the landlord says, listen, if you pay now, I'll give it to you for 10, that is a discount. And you're permitted to, to, uh, um, to offer a discount since he really only has to pay later at the end of every month listen if you want to pay up front i'll give you a discount that's permitted that's not called interest because the base amount is the higher amount and the discount is the lower amount and he doesn't have to pay until the end whereas a sale is different because it's a sale so the um the obligation to pay comes right away whenever i'm going to buy something that's i'm buying this now i have to pay you now therefore when the seller says listen um you have to pay now is uh the payment now is 1000 if you want to pay later if you want more time then you have to pay more so here the standard price is the lower one and the increased price for t- for paying later that's that uh, that increase of amount of payment is uh, for the benefit of waiting that is interest amarava takuba rabanan behamilata okmuha says the rabbi has looked into this distinction between rental and sale that a rental one has to pay at the end of the period and a sale he has to pay at the beginning of the period and they found a pasuk that backs it up because this pasuk keschir shana beshana really it's about a higher laborer but we're talking about rental where um so uh the same word also means a rental so the rent the amount of rental is bishana is year by year meaning the uh, what do you mean year by year that the rental payment for using something this year does not ha- yet have to be paid until the next year so you see it's only at the end of whatever the rental period is then that's when one has to pay now the Mishnah says, "Vim la gorden bishnem asar mane asur." In the case of a sale, if you say, "Listen, if you want to pay me later, then it's twelve hundred, but now is one thousand. That is prohibited." However, there is a way around this. Amad of Nachman tadsha shade. If you do this tacit interest, this means that you don't offer a sale price now. You just say, "Listen, how much is this land?" The land is uh, 1200 and the due date for payment is in six months from now. Right? You can set a due date. You don't have, the due date doesn't necessarily have to be now. Right? This is how much time you have to pay. So this would not be interest because it's not like I'll give you 1000 now or if you want more time, 1200 later. I'm not giving any time now. And that's the difference, which is what I was about to say. So these sages ask about to Rab Nachman, how could you say that this is permitted? Our Mishnah just said that if you offer to sell the item, the, the field for 1200 later on in the during the harvest season, that's prohibited. So how could you say that's permitted? And the answer is, Amar lehatam kasle, hacha la kasle. This is in the Mishnah. That's talking about where he fixes a price of interest. He did, because he said, really, the market value is 1,000. That's the market value now. If you want to pay later, you have to pay an extra 200. So he's fixing an amount. That's interest. That's no good. However, when um, Rav Nachman did his uh, tar, uh, tarsha, that was where he did not fix an amount of interest. He just said, listen, 
payment is in six months and it's 1200 that's the price the price is just 1200 it happens to be you have a, a you have time to pay Amar papa tarsha didi share papa says i have a way of doing tarsha and my way is permitted my tama shikhrai la pasi duze la sadikhna anahudeka abidna milita gabelo keyach papa was a, a brewer so he sold beer and the way it worked is when during beer making season the price was lower let's say ten dollars but then if, later on as uh, there's less beer around so then the price goes up it, it always goes up every year because it's going to go up um, later on in the season so let's say it becomes fifteen dollars so the papa says listen I, I'm, I'm going to sell my beer uh, at the higher price and people can pay later I don't mind but I only give one price why does he only give one price how come he doesn't pay let anyone pay for a discounted amount because he says the beer is not going to go bad. I don't mind uh, uh, storing it. I have a big garage. I store it. It's no problem. And I don't need the money. The papa was wealthy. And so he doesn't need to take a discount now for the money. He'd rather wait and get more money later. And therefore he says, I am doing a, a favor for the customer because customers, uh, they, it's hard for them to get, uh, to get cash now. So you know what? They can take the beer anytime they want and they can pay later. So this is a good example of Tarsha where he's not saying he's not even it's not for sale for ten dollars now he's not selling it he's not say ten dollars now or 15 later he's saying the price is 15 and pay anytime you want you can pay you have six months to pay that's permitted right similar as we as we said what we said before and the papa explains that really he's not he, he, the, the reason why he do why he does this and so um he's doing it as a favor to them but for, for him himself he doesn't need that the money now, so that's why he gives them uh, more time. Son of Rav Idi Esra Papa. Why are you considering the matter from the perspective of yourself, the, the brewer? Think about it from the perspective of the buyers. The customers, Dilu Havu Lehu Zuze, Havu Shakle Ki Hashta, Hashta Delet Lehu Zuze, Shakle Ki Yukra Del Kame. If the customers had money on hand, they were they had ca extra cash, then they would buy it at the lower price now. Even if not from you, they could go somewhere else and buy it now at when the market price is $10. So why would they pay more? Because they don't have cash now. So that's why um they can't they they can't pay till later so they're gonna have to pay, pay the higher price later so it doesn't matter from that from your perspective it makes no difference to you now later i have plenty of money i can i don't mind right uh, storing it but from their perspective they're agreeing to pay the higher price because they can pay later and therefore from their perspective that it's it's like interest um so uh, seems to we leave this as a machloket. Amad of Hama, Tarsha didi vaday share. But then Rav Hama says, the way I do Tarsha is for sure good. Everybody would agree with this because he does it in a way that's not a time difference of pay now or pay um, you know, at, at a certain time later, but rather a location difference. You see, in Rav Chama's place, let's say he grew, I don't know what he grew, or what he sold, let's say olives. And the olives where he was, um, was, uh, as, was a low price. So it was only $10 um, in his area. But there were other places, maybe they're busier, busier areas, where the olives went for 15 So what he would do is he would sell in his area the olives for a high price, right? Something like close to 15 15. And um, now this is uh, overcharging. Why does he do that? Because these merchants would then take these olives of Rav Chama to, uh, to the other place where it was higher and they would resell it at the higher, at the, uh, for a higher amount over there. Now, in the meantime, Rav Chama says, listen, uh, you don't have to pay me now. You could pay me later, right? When you go and, uh, and, and, and do that sale. Uh, so, so it's kind of like a partnership, right? Rav Chama owns the goods. He shares the goods with these agents. The agents go and sell it for him. The agents have the money and uh, whatever. They could use that money in, in the meantime, probably. And then they come back and they pay Rav Chama. So in a way, Rav Chama is like kind of saying, you could pay, you know, there is a market price. He doesn't say this, but there is a market price now that's $10. But he says, you know what? Take it for $14 and you have time. Go travel there, do your business, then come back and pay me later. Um, and he's making, taking advantage of the uh, difference in price and geographies. 
So we're seeing this kind of like a partnership. But still we ask, So why, uh, why is this permitted? And why do they do this? Why, why do they agree to this? And the answer is, um, because, in other words, if the market price in his place is only 10, they could go get it, go get it from someone else for 10 and then go and, and uh, to the other place and make a bigger margin. So why would they agree to be partners with Rav Chama and, uh, well, they don't have to pay up front, that's true, So, but, but what benefit is, uh, uh, do they have? in remaining partners with him though, this whole time? And the answer is because Rav Chama was a great sage, so great the sages had special leniencies, financial incentives. Number one, um, uh, since they're still uh, in my in my in my dominion, and anywhere they anywhere they go, um, they will the tax authorities will leave them from meches, will not charge them tax. So whose fruit is whose owls are these? Oh, Rav Chama, Rav Chama. Okay, that's okay. You don't have to pay tax on this. And also, when the sages would go to the marketplace. Everybody was agreed upon. Everybody would uh, would favor them and let them sell their stuff first and give them priority. And so these sellers, since they were working for Rav Chama, selling his stuff, there was a lot of um, financial benefit for that. So that's why it was good for a good business deal for Rav Chama. He didn't have to go and, and bother uh, doing that. And the agents also uh, were okay with that. And therefore they agreed to pay the higher price than anyone else around because there were benefits that it was Rav Chama's uh, olives. Rav Chama's olives are more sellable than someone else's olives. So that justifies the higher price. So it's not because they're, um, because they have to pay later, because they can pay later. That's why they get in the higher price. No, it's because they can sell it more easily, make a profit and come back. And therefore, Rav Chama's uh, system was permitted. Conclusion of the sugya is halacha is like Rav Chama. In fact, that doesn't say the halacha is like Rav Papa and Rav Nachman. Sounds like uh, halacha is not like that. But only in Rav Chama's case, where it was. Um, uh, clear why uh, why they were paying the higher price and it was not for the benefit of the time difference so that's permitted halacha is also like Rabbi al Azad that if someone pays fixed interest the court comes and removes it from them unlike Rabbi Yochanan who said that they do not and halacha is like Rabbi Anai that there's no difference between the item itself and the value of the item right if we made a, a forward sale I said I'm going to buy this uh, this amount of wheat from you and then the price goes up so you could give me the wheat or you could transfer the wheat into its monetary value into something else and that was also permitted according to Rabbi Yanai. Next Mishnah. Machalo ata sadev natan lo miksatami vamalo emata shetirse have maot vetol et shelcha asur. Here also we're going to have two cases and we're going to have to figure out the difference between the two cases. Here the first one is a sale and the second one is a loan. If someone sells a field and the buyer gives a down payment, let's say the field is worth $100,000 and the buyer gives $10,000 down payment. And then the seller says, listen, uh, whatever you want, bring the rest of the money, uh, the $90,000, and then take the field. This is prohibited. Why? Um, because basically uh, it's not clear here where, when the sale is actually happening, now or later. Let's say it's happening now. In that case, so you made the sale and the $90,000 is a loan. So, so it's saying, okay, you know, pay me the rest and then you can have it. I'll kind of keep it as a deposit in the meantime. Now, who's going to enjoy the fruits of the land in the meantime? If it's the seller, so this is a problem because now he has a, he gave a loan for $90,000 and he is benefiting from the fruits in between. And then uh, a few weeks later, uh, the guy comes in with the $90,000. Okay, here's your field. But now he got all his $100,000 and for the benefit of waiting, for it to get paid $90,000, he enjoyed the fruits. So, you see, this is a problem. Second case. Here, ironically, it's the case of a sale that's a problem, and the case of a loan is okay. Usually a loan is more like interest, but in this case, the loan is okay. Here is a case where um, uh, one person uh, lends money to someone else, $100,000. And the borrower says, listen, I'll give you a, uh, a deposit 
take my field and hold on to it, and that'll be a deposit in case I don't pay. And the lender says, listen, you have three years. If you don't come back and pay me by three years, right, on, let's say it's January 1st, on December 31st, in three years from now, then I'm keeping the field as payment. Then he keeps the field, and this is permitted. And in fact, Baitos Ben Zonin would do something just like, would do precisely this, um, based on the opinion of the sages with their agreement, and this is okay. So we're going to have to figure out why is this okay. The Gemara is going to explain. Mi ochel perot. First, who is enjoying the perot? In, what, uh, in uh, various cases, what would be allowed? What would be a case where it's permitted? Rav Huna Saba Amar Mocher Ochel Perot, Rav Anan Amar Meshalashin Eta Perot. So we're talking about the case of a sale, where there's some kind of down payment, and then the rest is paid later. And so Rav Huna says, uh, the seller can take the produce, and Rav Anan says, you have to give it to a third party to put an escrow until we figure out what happens. Does he go end up going through with the sale, or does he never show up with the rest of the payment and the sale doesn't go through? But actually, they're not arguing. They're talking about two different cases. When Ravuna says that's the seller that can enjoy the perot, that's when they make this, uh, this sale. He gives a down payment, and the seller says, when you bring the rest, then and only then will the sale be finalized. In the meantime, I'm keeping it my land. Then it's permitted for the seller to enjoy the fruit because all he did was get $10,000. Okay, I'll put it on the side and I'm waiting for the rest. In the meantime, it's totally mine. So I can enjoy the produce. When you bring another 90000 then I'll transfer the, the land to you. And from then on, you have the produce. So then that would be just fine if that's how they said it. Uh, but if he said, the seller, if the seller said, listen, thank you for the $10,000 now. And then when you bring the 90000 then the sale will be finalized retroactively from now. In that case, they have a big problem because since it's retroactive from now, if the seller enjoys the produce and then he ends up paying the, 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 the $90,000, so now he got paid and um, he, he had benefit of the produce all that time when it wasn't his. So that would be interest for the benefit of paying later. So that's no good. And how about the, 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 the buyer? Why don't you say, say, say the buyer keeps everything? Well, maybe the buyer will not come up with the rest of the money and the sale will never happen and then the buyer is enjoying produce that doesn't belong to him and meanwhile he gave ten thousand dollars so now he's enjoying produce for the benefit of lending out ten thousand dollars which is going to be returned um, because um, uh, the the sale uh, sale didn't go through and so now that would be considered interest um, on his account so therefore either way since we don't know if the sale will be finalized or not that this is the case of Ravanan who says, put it in escrow. And the, the escrow will see if the sale goes through, then the produce ends up going to the buyer. If the sale doesn't go through, then the produce goes to the seller. Tane Rav Yosef Safra, Berebit de Berebichia Pamim, Shishen Mutarim Pamim Shishen Masurim, Pamim Shemoher Mutar Velokeh Asur, Pamim Shalokeh Mutar, Moher Asur. Now they mentioned a couple of cases where it's permitted and also not permitted. The case of Mishnah was not permitted. We saw Rav Huna Rav Anan talking about cases where is a, a, pro, a pro, permitted way to do it. So now Rav Safra says, I have a Baraita from the school of Rabbi Chia about Rebit. And this Baraita teaches that there are, are, is a scenario in which both the buyer and the seller can take produce. We'll see what it is in a minute. And there is a, also a scenario where neither of them is allowed to take the produce. That was the scenario of Rav Anan. That's why you have to give it to a third party. And there is a scenario in which the seller is allowed to take the produce, but not the buyer. And there's another scenario in which the buyer can take the produce, but the seller cannot. So the case of Rav Huna who said that the, the seller can, right, that would be the third case here. Okay, so Ane Rava Batre. So Rava um, is now going to explain the details of the Braita. The Braita is very succinct. It just says zero cases. You figure it out. So Rava says, I'll tell you what the cases are. When is it permitted for both to take the produce? When the seller says, you can take the, uh, acquire the land part by part, 
as much as you buy so as much as you pay so uh first you had you gave me ten thousand dollars you acquire ten percent of the land then you gave me the another another ten thousand twenty now you have twenty percent of the land and so every time the pay payment is made then they he gives over a portion you can uh, take the produce from that 10%, that 20% of the land, and I'll take it from the other 80%. Then when you pay half, then you can take produce from half the land, and I'll take from the other half. So in that case, both sides are permitted because they're taking only from the part that they have acquired. That's a good case. When are both of them prohibited? When the seller says, thanks for the down payment, you can collect the rest when you pay retroactively from now. Whenever you pay, retroactively will be yours from now. In that case, we don't know which way it's going to go, and therefore neither of them can take the produce. Um, they have to give it to a third party. And sometimes the seller can take the produce, but the buyer cannot. That's when the seller says, when you bring the rest of the money, then you'll get it. Until then, it's totally mine. So then the seller can keep the produce in the meantime. And uh, sometimes the buyer can take the produce and the seller cannot. That's when the seller says, listen, it's yours from now. No matter what, it's full sale, just based on the $10,000 and the other $90,000 will be a loan. Okay, so that's fine. Now the buyer owns the the owns the field himself that's just a total sale so the buyer obviously can keep any all the produce because it's his and the rest is a loan so he'll pay whenever the due date is he'll come up with the other ninety thousand, and that's totally fine because the seller is not getting any benefit for the delayed payment man tana shenehem asurin who is the author of that part that says of this mishnah that says that both neither of them can collect in that scenario it's not the opinion of the because remember we saw the biuda said that when you have uh, uncertain interest it's permitted if you make a deal and it could be that the interest will end up being paid but it could be not then it's permitted it's only a prohibition if there's definitely going to be interest therefore in the case when the seller says thanks for the ten thousand dollar deposit when you bring the rest of the ninety thousand then the sale will be finalized retroactively from now so in that case you can let the buyer keep all the produce in the meantime because uh, it's it, it just as likely that the buyer will come up with the rest of the money, will go through with the rest of the sale, and then it will have been his retroactively from now. So he kept his own produce and there was no payment of interest. There was no problem. And so since there's a possibility that he will uh, f uh, complete the deal without paying interest, therefore, let him keep it and you don't have to worry about the other possibility of maybe he'll take the produce that doesn't belong to him. Um, that's okay. Um, because since for on, there is a possibility that there won't be interest, therefore, according to the Buddha, that will be permitted. Therefore, this mish, this baraita cannot be the opinion of the Buddha. Lastly, mishken lo bait, mishken lo sadev, amai lo lich shetirse lemochram lo timkerem el ali bedamim halalu asur, beshoviyehen mutar. You have a case where you have a borrower and a lender, uh, he borrows a hundred thousand dollars, and he says, here is my field, take um, hold on to it as a pledge or as house. Um, now, the lender says, listen, I'm going to hold on to this. Um, if you decide ever to sell it, don't tell, don't sell it to anybody else, right? Rather, sell it to me for this $100,000, which is lower than what the market price may end up being later on. That is prohibited because then he would be getting a benefit for the for the loan here's a hundred thousand here's a hundred thousand dollars and now he's going to collect a home uh that may be worth a hundred and fifty thousand dollars so that's no good however if he pays the market value later at whatever time they end up making that transaction that's permitted right um uh, he says uh, i don't sell to anybody else sell to me at its market value and that'll be a hundred thousand plus it's under fifty okay here's the other fifty and the rest of it you know, i forgive the loan that's okay, but he can't set the value um, at the uh, at at the at whatever the loan is because that might be cheaper. And then he's benefiting from the time value of the loan. Mantana bedamim halalu asur. Now, who says that in this case it's prohibited um, when he says for this money? 
Amamar Avuna, Bered Rav Yoshua, the Lak Rabbi Yehuda, the Rabbi Yehuda, Hamar Sadechad Berbit Mutar. So once again, we say here that this Baraita cannot be the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda because Rabbi Yehuda says if it's uncertain interest, then it's permitted. And here we don't know if there's going to be interest. We don't know if the if he's going to end up selling the field at all. Maybe he won't sell it. He'll just pay back the money and get back his field. We don't know if it's going to go up in price. Maybe that will be the regular price, and there won't be any interest payment. So therefore, since it's not for sure that he's going to be paying interest, you're permitted to make this deal and go through with it. All this was a discussion of the resha over here, of a sale with a down payment. Um, we never ended up explaining the um, reason why the sefa is good, where um, it's a loan with a field as a deposit. And if he says, if you don't come up with the money for the next three years, then I am keeping it. So what's the difference? Why is that permitted? Okay, we'll talk about this uh, case more on the next staff. But let's explain the basic reason. The basic re- reason is that this is not considered um, a this is not considered interest um, because even if the field is worth more than the value of the loan, let's say the loan is a hundred thousand dollars, right? This is hundred thousand dollars and payable in three years, and this is a field uh, that you can use as a deposit. And the field is worth one hundred fifty dollars, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So listen, if you don't pay it, then from now for three years, then I'm going to keep the field. That's permitted because it's actually not interest. Uh, interest accumulates gradually, right? Over time, every day or every month, it will continue to increase. In this case, even if even at the point of three years, less one day, he only has to pay the hundred thousand dollars. So here, it's not interest, but rather a penalty. And you could tell it's a penalty because uh, if he doesn't pay on December thirty first and instead pays on January first, then that's it. He loses his entire field. So a penalty is permitted. You can say, "Listen, I'm giving you this loan. It's due. Here's the due date." If you pass the due date, midnight, right, even by one minute, then you're going to have to pay this amount in penalty. That's permitted. You have to encourage someone to pay. It's not interest, whereas interest is different. Interest is, it accumulates over time. And so that is, uh, that's the difference, like the produce, which he's enjoying over time uh, while he has it. So that's a benefit for the for being able to pay later, um, whereas this, um, is, which is a penalty, for not paying on, on uh, by the due date, that is permitted. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.